Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Only Stupid Answers. This is a show where we answer your questions about movies, TV shows, comic books. I'm your host, DJ Wooldridge. With me, as always, is Roxy Stryer. Good morning, Roxy. What's up, DJ? Uh, what's up is I have a little bit of a cold, so I want to apologize to everybody at home if my voice sounds weird or if I sniffle. It doesn't cough. sound weird, actually. I don't know that I would have known if you hadn't said. Good. Well, then let's cut it out. Let's cut. <laughs> let's cut this out. But listen, we have a very picking up my slack today. We have a very special guest, Wendy. Say hi to the kids. Well, hello, everybody. Thanks uh, for having me. Love having you. I think the last time we had you on was to talk about Ant-Man. And this time, in honor of a previous conversation, just a couple episodes back, we had Hector on. And he was adamant that the MCU could not and should not be rebooted or recast. And that uh, episode hit well. So we're deciding to recast. We're going to we're gonna recast. <laughs> the. We're having you on to recast the Marvel Universe. Kevin Feige's given us the call. He's like, hey, we need to reboot the Marvel Marvel Universe. Who are we going to recast as our core Avengers? We're just doing the core ones uh, from the Avengers movie because we only have a limited amount of time. Maybe if this episode hits well, we'll do others. Yeah. But Wendy, for for those that are not familiar, maybe didn't uh, haven't checked out the other episodes which you've been on, which you should check out. Who are you? Where can they find you? What are you up to? Oh, thanks. Uh, I am a movie critic and a content creator, so I talk about movies and TV shows on mainly youtube uh with the movie couple and we do trailer reactions and whatnot uh all the fun stuff that just like to be a nerd very cool links in the description check that out um you were just telling us about a movie that you saw that i don't think we could talk about yet not yet not yet <laughs> not yet not yet but i think on tuesday check out the movie couple on tuesday uh, who it was what's... Dune 2. She saw it. She, she spoiled saw the whole thing for Dune us. <laughs> she saw Deadpool 3. She saw work print of Deadpool. She saw, I wait. saw Deadpool 3, all of it. I saw Deadpool 4. Yeah, hold on. Wait, it was uh, Ac Acme. Uh, what is it? Acme versus oh, Cody. Acme right versus before Zoslov deleted it, she was allowed to see a copy of it. Um, yep. How I wish. How I wish. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. For real. Um, <laughs> listen, everybody. If you want to listen to this show ad-free, if you want to watch it live, if you want to check out Patreon-exclusive shows like What We're Into or Spider-Versity, you can do that over at patreon.com slash answers. Got there. My brain blanked out for a second, but we're back. Uh, also, on iTunes, if you give us a five-star review, it's more than appreciated. And on Spotify, every week we ask a question. Last week's question was, inspired by Argyle, what is the worst movie you've ever seen? And I should have known... Roxy, I just I just put this one out because I didn't want to. I was like, ah, what, whatever. And there's always, whenever you ask something like this, there's always somebody in there that's ready to start some shit. What um, do they say? Well, here's the ones that track for me: Bookworm, Baby Geniuses Two. I was so disgusted uh, that it made to theaters and not direct to video. Uh, Wait, is that one or two movies? Baby Geniuses Two. Bookworm so it's the second one. Oh, is Bookworm one. is the person. Oh, no. baby genius. Their comment is baby geniuses too. Baby geniuses too. Okay, yeah. so maybe I am hearing a little cold in you. Yeah. I thought you said bookworm baby Jesus too. No, I also baby, heard I'm, the same. Baby I geniuses. Miss bookworm baby Jesus one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, baby geniuses too. Uh, Brian, mm. ooh, Brian, Brian, Brian Raburn. Yeah. Independence Day Resurgence. Mm. Uh, and then Xavier Thomas out here starting shit. Uh, I don't know about worst movie, but I definitely felt a lot the same thoughts, a lot of the same thoughts with Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Like I'm waiting for something better to happen that never did. Get out of here, Xavier Thomas. Get out of here. Like, hmm, what's one of the best movies in the last decade I can say was the worst movie I've ever seen? Get out of here. Get out of here. Oh, my God. But listen... While we're talking about movies, look, gunplaymovie.com. Roxy and I are trying to make a movie. It's all live on Kickstarter right now. We got an incredible cast, not just Roxy, but also uh, people you are probably familiar with. Steve Zaragoza, Whitney Moore, Bree Estrig, James Allen McCune, so many more talented people. Uh, listen, y'all, it's tough to make movies out here. It's tough to make uh, uh, independent films and getting tougher, if I'm being honest. Um and uh, and so if you want to see a movie that you would not be able to see otherwise, we will not be able to make this this uh, irreverent existential crime thriller without your support, without a community behind us backing us because movies cost money, need to pay your cast, need to pay your crew. 
Um, so please go over to gunplaymovie.com. You can be in the movie. You can be a producer on it, have your name on IMDb and in the credits and be part of a special Q, uh, uh, digital uh, Q&A and screening with the cast and crew. You can get a signed poster. So many amazing things. Roxy, take it away. What else? What, else? what am I missing? Say, DJ, I could have covered the whole thing for you if you wanted. You are <laughs> under the weather. And I am happy to rep this movie all day, every day. Uh, I think I've posted about it 45,000 times. You've been doing great. You've been doing great. You want to know what? I just really, really want to hit home that like if they don't support it, it doesn't happen. Yeah. So unlike some projects where it's like, okay, we just need a little salt and pepper at the end. Yeah. Just got to put some spice on it. It's like. I want to make this movie. I love this script. I love this role. I really want to do this. And it is a fan funded project and that's how it works. So hopefully the people want to see it as bad as I want to be in it. Uh, and also DJ is somebody who deserves to have this happen no. like more so than any of the actors in it. I mean, he's just been working his ass off on this for years and it was supposed to happen pre Panini, which yeah. is a reminder of what we call the pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, it was supposed to happen pre strike it's like every curveball, every delay that could have ha come at him as a first time feature filmmaker uh, just did. And so I think that that sucks <laughs> for lack of better words and just hope that people come through for you. Yeah. Thank you, Roxy. I truly yeah. appreciate it. But I think you all will really love it. Uh, all the feedback we've been getting so far is really positive. So go check out if you want to know more about it. There's a whole video up there. You can learn more about the cast. We just uh, announced, I think. Just after the last episode, Sean Whalen, who uh, Roxy worked on, uh, worked with on Crust, uh, famous uh, character actor, uh, Twister, People Under the Stairs, like literally because IMDb is uh, stacked. Um, he's has joined the cast as well. We got an incredible cast. We're getting incredible feedback. I think you guys will really like it. But as Roxy said, it only happens with your support. So go to gunplaymovie.com. And now on to some news. Did you guys hear? So I put it in the news about these Daredevil set photos. Did you guys see these circulating the interwebs? A wee bit. Twitter doesn't work anymore. Very true. But it, it's, <laughs> it's true. It's still popped up. It doesn't work. It no. doesn't work. I, I mean, it's functionally useless. Show. It's such a bummer. Yeah, yeah. it doesn't work. Um, but this actually, it actually did pop up for me over there. And I was like, look at you, Twitter, doing your job for the first time in two months. <laughs> well, doing doing your job in that I saw them, do, not doing a job in that no context. Of, like, no, it used to be back in the day, these would pop up and I'd kind of understand where mm -hmm. these photos came from, like whatever. And also, no. is it feel weird? I'm going to go ahead and bring them up. Uh, and we'll and we'll talk about them. So this is this is Charlie Cox in a new Daredevil costume, and uh, the name just left me. The guy playing Bullseye in in his and I guess what I assume is a proto Bullseye costume. Is it weird? I feel like between this and the Deadpool mm -hmm. leaks, I feel like mm -hmm. Marvel used to crack down on this shit. You know, I think they still do. Mm -hmm. What, but we we're seeing. I feel like I'm seeing it more. Like I feel like I kind of can tell. Like every reveal in Deadpool, I was like, uh, already know. <laughs> Do you not think that they are okay with this? I, I think that's my question. Why Why do we think we're seeing more of it? Is it kind of a way? Like, because I, I have wondered, considering uh, Marvel's been having a rockier road, that maybe the leaks with Deadpool in particular are like, hey, everybody. Buy your tickets for the summer. Make sure you show up. Everybody is in it. You know what I mean? Like it might be mm -hmm. intentionally like, hey, we're going to let this stuff leak. Wendy, what do you think? I mean, I feel like Marvel's going to do what they do is to keep the integrity of like what is upcoming as much of a secret as they can. Like the reveal when they're ready to reveal. So the thing is that you you can't really stop photographers from putting on these like super long lenses and shooting from far away so the picture the pictures actually the ones that you just showed dj is like way more high def than any of the ones that i saw yeah. way more so they definitely look closer range uh so but i don't i don't believe the leak is like an intentional like hey let's remind you like what we've got coming i think everybody is really excited about daredevil um so a bit spoiler if you haven't watched echo but like you know he shows up in it and i think a lot of people got very excited to show to see him show up so i don't really feel like daredevil necessarily needs that kind of like promotion yeah 
This is not what you asked, but DJ, will you put up the image one more time for a second for the, for the kids at home? Um, how do I get my lips that red all the time? Like, <laughs> I, I'm going to be honest with you, Roxy. I feel like that is either maybe it, it was cold outside or also maybe it's the way the photo, you know, it's not the, it's, it's high def than what we may have seen, but it's not the most high def photo. I, Release I your makeup routine, <laughs> daredevil. Well, They're plump of, and red. Yes. Speaking of red, though, I gotta tell y'all, I'm digging. I'm dig. I'm digging it. I'm digging. It's it's redder. You all can't see what my mouse is doing, but it's like it's like circling the little the, this thing. The one part that I'm not sure about. Hey, what is, are you circling? I'm circling this red costume. I love it. I love that it's more oh, red. I love. I, I love. Circling the lips. Uh, no, no, not the lips. Not the lips. I'm a little less focused on the lips, Roxy, than you are. Mm-hmm. But I do mm-hmm. understand it. Uh, it's been I, a long time, DJ. It's been I, a long time. I like I like the redness of the costume. I like that they dialed back the black. It looks a little bit more maneuverable. Uh, I like that we're sticking with the helmet that works. The one part I'm a little con- uh, unsure about is there's these red LEDs in the eyes, which which could be cool, mm-hmm. or it could be like with Moon Knight where we tried to do something a little bit on the on the eyes, and it's like it looks cartoony and stupid, and and it's like don't you don't and you also don't need give your VFX team a break. Like you don't need the extra bullshit. Like it worked fine. You don't need it. Um, The one, my one note on both of these is that I don't know why we're so allergic to these characters icons. Like bullseye doesn't have his classic little bullseye icon and daredevil still doesn't have his double D's. I just want to give daredevil. I hope so. I want daredevil to have his double D's. Why not? (laughs) <laughs> who doesn't dj who doesn't <laughs> want to give daredevil double d's come on right. i'm sure not you everyone, could listen not everyone's so blessed i've DJ, seen you know? listen i've seen what we're able to do with ai art the one thing it seems pretty competent about is giving things up giving people double d's that seems to be the only thing it's pretty good at so uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. i am with you so Let's so see. beyond the lips you guys what do you how do you how do you feel about these costumes <laughs> I have to say I'm not particularly picky. Like this <laughs> tends to come up on our show all the time. And unless something looks egregious to me, it looks pretty good. Like yeah. I'm not the person to sit here and rip apart something unless it ends up like there was a couple times where on something like the flash, they changed things. And I was like, why, why did you yeah. do that? That looks so goofy. Yeah. Uh, but unless something looks super out of place or it's just like, that doesn't make functional sense to me and mm-hmm. have, there's no merit to it. I'm always kind of going to be like, okay, cool. I want to see how it moves. I yeah. want to see how it lives in this world. I want to see how it is against different backdrops. I want to see if that thing on the side is for function or fashion. Like yeah. it, there, I think that people who like spend a lot of time breaking these down and they're like, well, um, actually in issue number. And it's like, okay, but this is a different story. And maybe this makes sense here. So yeah. to me, this definitely, it didn't, I wasn't like, Oh my God, I'm blown away by these images. Yeah. But I was like, cool, good. Nice reminder that this is coming and good enough for sure. Yeah. 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 What about you, Wendy? What do you think? Yeah. I'm, I'm the same when I first saw it, I didn't have like a, any negative reaction. I like the, the shade of the red. Yeah. Uh, I like the texture that's on it. I do agree. I think it's weird that he doesn't have the, the classic DD, uh, but maybe like it's one of those, like towards the end of the show, he gets it or he gets a, another costume upgrade. Who knows? Um, and then for Bullseye, it's the same. It's I agree with you, DJ. I don't know why they shied away from the very like iconic. It, like, I don't know if it's, is it too on the nose to have the Bullseye's icon on his costume and have his name be, be that too? I don't know, but I wouldn't like to see it because I just think it would, it would make the costume pop just a little bit more, but otherwise like I'm fine with it. I think also they look super comfortable. Yeah, that's one thing I like about, uh, and that's something to note here is is they're in the middle of because there's I, obviously I don't have the video, but they're in the middle of sh- uh, shooting, not really an action scene, but there was some movement. So I do think I don't know that this is like uh, I think the terming is the hero version of the suit, like the suit that when he's just standing around and not having to ah. do stuff that's just supposed to look sexy. I don't know that that's mm-hmm. this version of this. And I will say to your point, Wendy, there is extra space on the chest now that's just oh. asking for a logo on the Daredevil costume. <laughs> Um, and, and I know that it's goofy, but listen, it's like, like a it, bullseye of empty space. Exactly. Like that, and like, and like yes. to Wendy's point, like, is it too on the nose? I don't know. 
like it's a we got a guy running around in a devil costume like who cares like come on, just do the thing like i you know what i mean like i don't care about believability or any of that uh, the jazz i just want to see i just you're get you're like right there now if you could get him in this costume hanging out with tom holland and the version of his costume at the end of no way home i, I, I this boy would be a happy camper um real quick we got a lot of recasting to do but you know the, yeah. hollywood's doing some recasting for us so I'm gonna going to read what I grabbed because I'm going to be honest. I'm not sure I, c- I completely understand what's going on here. But apparently we might get, have some confirmation that Pedro Pascal is Reed Richards. Uh, this is uh, what I'm about ready to quote comes from Gizmodo. A post on the SAG After website promoting its Pedro Pascal career retrospective seemingly confirmed the actor has been cast as Reed Richards in MCU's Fantastic Four, but has since been deleted. So I, I, I think what I'm supposed to understand, and maybe you guys know, understand this better, I guess SAG After posted something about Pedro Pascal that was that included like listing his credits, and one of them was Reed Richards in Fantastic Four. And I think Matt Shackman, who as far as I know is still attached to direct it, reposted this information. And for Twitter slash X, this has been enough to be like, okay, he is confirmed as Reed Richards. Yeah, so it said something along the lines of like, and we're so excited to see his upcoming performance of Reed Richards. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, whoever the SAG intern was that hit send on this yeah. is prob- was probably bawling their eyes out. Yeah. I mean, like, just s- such a shit way for something to be announced. Yeah. Uh-huh. Truly so messy, so bad. Uh, people make mistakes all the time, you know, like I'm never going to be, I, we, I'm sure all three of us on this show, we don't like people who give spoilers on purpose for things. Yeah. You know, we've seen people in our space that like post out spoilers on purpose for movies before they've come out. And it's like, why'd you do that? That's really rude. But it's happened before where somebody slipped something on accident. You yeah. know, it's an accident. They saw something, they say it. And it's like, I don't get mad at those people ever because it happens. It yeah. happens. Sometimes if you know information, you end up saying it on accident. You didn't mean to screw anybody. You just had more information on, than other people. Well, and, Clearly, you, and you and you know how we've all been in this position too. It's probably some some exec like read over the copy, like include the Fantastic Four thing. And so they put it in there and sent it. And then everybody got in trouble. Like, oh, it was the intern's fault. I didn't tell them to do that. Uh, it was this kid's fault. <laughs> totally. And I'm sure, I really don't think anybody included this, like, this is the way we want to leak this. Yeah. I think probably they had information. They forgot the public didn't have that information. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They were like, here are the things he's done. And he's so amazing. And here's what we're looking forward to. Yeah. Send. This is it. Like, and it, they weren't ready for that smoke. I mean, yeah. it was just, it was a lot. And uh, the fact that it was deleted as opposed to explained and the repost, I think this is probably a pretty sure thing. And um, I, I think that's great. I'm excited about that. However, what a bummer of a way to get that announced. I'm sure yeah. he's like, I, I've kept this secret for months. I haven't said absolute jack shit about it. And then you guys <laughs> goddamn sag offices yeah. posted this in the most anticlimactic way possible. They're God like, listen, it. SAG is like, listen, you gotta understand, okay? That retrospective was generated by AI, all right? <laughs> mm-hmm. We didn't we're not paying entrance to do that stuff. Wendy, what do you what do you think about this? About the the supposed like oopsie leak I guess, or I about guess, him? I, yeah, what do you think about uh, Pedro Pascal uh, probably being Reed Richards? I can see him doing it. I think uh, he's a multifaceted actor. He can be fun, over the top, goofy. He can be serious. He can be dark and gritty. Uh, and I think I would love to see his take on Reed Richards and uh, ready for him to just like spew all this like scientific words at me. I don't like you it. know. I don't like it, fam. I don't like it. Oh, now, now, grant, now, like granted, I don't. I like Pedro Pascal quite a bit, and and I will say, I will say, I also didn't think he was the right cast as Joel, and he was great in the show. When they first out, like he's Joel in The Last of Us, I'm like, that doesn't seem right, and he was great, he was fantastic. So there's there's uh, in all likelihood it's a, a similar situation where I'm like, Pedro Pascal DJ. is Reed Richards. Uh, he was fantastic, DJ. Oh, he's fantastic, and yeah, I think <laughs> I think it'll be you know there's there in all likelihood it'll be the same thing because as Wendy said, he is incredibly versatile. But it just feels like it. Here's what it feels like. It you know you remember when like Marvel used to do like exciting like kind of unknown like Chris Hemsworth is Thor like oh my god I didn't whatever. This feels mm-hmm. very much like well Fantastic Four is Marvel's first family. Reed Richards is the dad of the Fantastic Four. Who's the internet's dad? Pedro Pascal. You know what I mean? <laughs> it, that and it just feels like that's not. 
that's just not I, and, and granted they already blew their perfect Reed Richards casting by having Oscar Isaac be Moon Knight and he would have been great he would have been a great Reed Richards and, and I am very ready to be proven wrong because Pedro Pascal is great it's just one of those like I really I just I don't know I just have I'm having trouble DJ, seeing it I don't necessarily disagree with you yeah it if I was the casting director, I don't believe that he would have been my first, second, third, or tenth pick. Yeah. I just, in Pedro, we trust. I think he's going to do a great job no matter what, so I'm not worried. But was this very outside-the-box thinking? No. Mm-hmm. And I'm with you. He, at this point, is so famous. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. he's so effing famous. He breathes, and people tweet about it. Yeah. Like, he wears an outfit, and it is the top post for 15 days yeah. like yeah. he is just so truly so so famous that it is i i do miss the days where our castings were people who were a little bit less known yeah. uh but i think he's gonna do a stellar job so it's fine and i think it's really contingent on the rest of the cast as well yeah, like, yeah. are they gonna go with all A-list celebrities across the board, because I think that would be a problem for us. Or yeah. is like he the staple of the A-listers? Also worth noting um, that he he's a little older to begin, and and I think I think he's in the age range of this was a, this was a moment for me. I'm like someone on Twitter was like, I can't believe they cast fifty year old Pedro Pascal to be their new Reed Richards, and I'm like, and I looked it up. I'm like, he can't be fifty. He's only ten years older than. <gasps> Round up. Oh my God, no. Um, uh, time only works in one direction. Um, but uh, which is it, 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 to start. But I think that's probably the age range. I haven't looked up. That's probably the age range when RDJ started Iron Man. Yeah, he's. Mm-hmm. I think he started Iron Man a little bit younger than that, but but not by much. Also, Wasn't he late forties. I'm gonna look up. I'm not gonna say who it is, but I'm gonna look up. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm looking up who the the on the internet the lead contender seems to be the Sue. And there's a not insignificant gauge gap between our yeah. Reed I just and our looked Sue. that up too. I yeah, was I was looking like, up mm, the same person, but I was like, oh, hmm, mm, okay. We'll co- we'll compare notes uh, off the off the air. Guys, we- <laughs> that's yes. sexy. This is Hollywood. What are you guys missing? Yeah. Age gaps are in. <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah. I mean, hey, listen. I'm sure there's ac- actresses in their late 40s that would make a great Sue. But uh, I here's what would excite me, because I think it'd be very easy for Marvel to do what they did with Doctor Strange and just try and be like, hey, what if uh, Iron Man again? What if that like, snarky, smarter than everybody kind of asshole? And I think what would be interesting for Reed, and it'd be easy to do with Reed, but I think what would be interesting is, and I think Pedro Pascal would be really good at it, go goofy dad direction. Like he should be closer to Rick Moranis and Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. And and just like, he's kind of like, he's always thinking, he's always like 10 steps ahead, but that makes him kind of like absent-minded and kind of goofy. Um, uh, like, and, 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 you know, Pedro Pascal's the internet's dad, it leaned into the dad joke direction. I think that would be a, a interesting, different take, a different texture in the MCU. I think Pedro Pascal would be good at it. I think there's something there. That's what I would, if it were me, that's what I would lean towards. Okay. As we, as you're mentioning all of that, DJ, I can't help but in my head, I am just all right re- because we're recasting today. Yes. Everything I'm thinking about is recast. I'm like the ages, the yeah, like, yeah. is this the right? Is this happening? <laughs> I, I yeah. took this like I'm a casting director. Guys, yeah. I took this job very serious today. Good, good, good. Yeah. Well, and it's, and it's important to note nothing against it, 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 his age or whatever. It's just typically when you're casting this role, it's a long, like imagine 20 years ago, Hugh Jackman's being cast as Wolverine and he's already 50. It's like, what what, what are we doing? You know what I mean? He, he wasn't. Yeah, I just think it depends on how people move. Like, you know, people had an issue with Ben Affleck's age as well. I had no issue with that. It's always happens. In, and to me, have somebody move. It's like when yeah. people were like, um, Idris Elba has aged himself out of Bond. And it's just like, I don't know Idris Elba could true. run circles around 20 year olds. Like yeah. it just, if, if it doesn't seem weird like when you're on screen then it's not weird well and also and it's important to note reed richards isn't typically like action fight scene guy like that's not his right that's not right. really his mm-hmm. role um yeah so anyway we'll see i'm sure he's gonna do great you know and if yeah. he's cast it, it, true i yeah. that yeah d- roxy that would be the funniest thing to me is if <laughs> Is if somebody at SAG saw like the deadline rumor headline and thought it was a thing, and then they so yeah, this will this will be great. 
And <laughs> and it's not an actual thing. Because he Pedro's what, the fifteenth person that's been rumored to be Reed Richards? <laughs> no so joke, PJ. Yeah. When you said that AI thing, I'm like, it is highly it is possible. Yeah. It is not AI there's cold, less cold. than <laughs> Yeah. I just said it, thought it. Yeah. Uh, my choice probably would have been Dev Patel. I think he would have made a good Reed Richards at that point. Oh. He was he was one of the rumored at one point. And I'm like, yes, that's a winner. You and I shoehorn Dev Patel into every role, though, DJ. Have you it's seen like the Monkey that. Man trailer yet, Roxy? No. You haven't seen it yet? You watch it. Watch that trailer. Oh, I'm going to send it to you. I love Dev Patel, though. I love Dev yeah. Patel. He's great. He's so good. So I think you'll really like the trailer. But and will you like it. the casting we're about ready to do? spoilers you'll have to tune in everybody to right now here's when we're going to be doing so what we're doing today as i talked about uh, i got the call from kevin flaggy and he's like listen guys hector's wrong all right uh we need to reboot this baby and uh kevin uh despite marvel's track record for casting he wants our help that's crazy right uh so we, we're gonna we're gonna help him out we're gonna recast the og avengers so we're talking and I and I was very specific when I reached out to you all, because uh, you know I didn't say Iron Man. I said Tony Stark. We're recasting Steve Rogers, Tony Stark, Thor, uh, Bruce Banner, Natasha Romanoff, Clint Barton, and Nick Fury. All right, not necessarily. That's it. Or, that's it. That's it. If you guys want more more of this, let us know because there's plenty. There's plenty of characters to cast. Not not as many. I was like, is the, is there an actor that hasn't been a superhero yet? Uh, we found I found some. Um, ooh, I should pull up my notes. That would be important to have. Yeah, that was difficult. That sometimes, like the amount of times throughout this, I wanted to cast Chase Crawford and was just like, oh, I just like d don't want to keep putting superheroes from other shows or other mm. movies into whatever it is. The amount of times I wanted to DC, and not that you can't do that, but yes. just like. There are so many. Everyone's been a superhero, and it's like, ugh. Yeah, and the one rule I gave you all was that mm -hmm. it was was just that we can't like, haha, -ha, I'm being tricky. Robert Downey Jr. is recast as Iron Man. Like, no, it has to be. Yeah. A not that Robert Jr. can't Jr. can't be a different role. It just can't be the same role. So. Uh, we're going to start off with, I wanted to mix it up, save some of the marquee names for later in the, in the list. And we're going to, but we're going to start with a Mr. Steve Rogers. Rod save some of the marquee names for later. We're going to start <laughs> with Steve Rogers. Well, I say, some of them, I got to mix it up. We're, we got, we got some, we got, we got to mix them up, you know, <laughs> even and out. Well, didn't you think he was going to say save some of the names for later? I we're thought you were going to say Hawkeye first. No, 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 no. I, you got to mix it up. So you, basically, we're starting with Steve Rogers and we're ending with Tony Stark. I wasn't going to do, I just didn't okay. want to do like Captain America, Iron Man, and Thor right off the bat. But we're, but you know, gotcha, gotcha. Give, give the kids yeah. something. We're going to start with Steve. Roxy, we're going to start with you. Good. You're tasked with Let's starting. Let's start at the bottom of the totem pole with <laughs> Captain America. With Captain America, yeah. <laughs> okay, so. This actually was the person I had the hardest time casting. Gotcha. Um, because every single person I wanted to cast was British, and that felt wrong. <laughs> yeah, not right. Yeah. Um, in, in, until four in the morning, I believed KJ Apple was American. Yeah. Uh, surprise, he's not. <laughs> yeah. So this one was very difficult. So I went to my TV brain. Wait, where's KJ Apple from? I'm so sorry. I don't mean to derail you. Where is he from? Uh, River, River, Riverdale. Riverside. Yeah, but but he's Riverside. not. What is he? What is his? What? He's, uh, he's full blown British. That's wild. That's yeah. dude. Those are the like when you find out Melanie Melanie Linsky's like a Kiwi. You're like well, that. That is a good American accent. You were doing good work. <laughs> and tell me, KJ Apple wouldn't make a great Steve Rogers? But okay, yeah. whatever. Yeah. I, I really I feel like you kind of got to go American with Captain American, and yeah. maybe that's me being nationalist or whatever. But it's literally the only one. Yeah, with it's America in the name. The yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. So what I did was I pulled from television, thought about like, uh, who could I really see being like all American boy, super lovable, um, slightly annoys me at times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I pulled somebody that I feel like maybe you guys don't know, but who would be awesome in this role. He comes from uh, a Yellowstone spinoff, 1923, and it's Brandon Sklenar, who is the lead on that show. So we know he can do dated period piece, which obviously uh, Avengers is not a dated period piece, yeah. but Captain America is. 
he's got that like still hunky, but looks like he is in the uh, in the past, like could slick back the hair. He's really, really talented. Yeah. And I think he would rock this role and kind of go into what we were talking about earlier, DJ, with like kind of tired of casting all knowns. Um, so yeah. shied away from somebody who I also think would be great, like a Dylan O'Brien, mm-hmm. who I think would knock this out of the park. Um, and went with somebody who was lesser known. Um, it, it, so this is dreamy African hunter boy from 1923. Yes. Gotcha. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you gonna give him? Are you gonna give him a girlfriend that's like, I want to live dangerously, and then every time something dangerous happens, she like oh, is weeping. Uh, <laughs> DJ, I forgot you watched the show. Yeah. How perfect is he? Yeah, yeah he'd be great. He'd be great. He'd be really Thank good. You. Yeah, he's really good. And I don't. I, I have notes on 1923 as a show, but he's real good. He's really good. He'd be really good. And he's from Jersey. He's Jersey boy. Yeah. This Wen- is a good fit. Wendy. Steve Rogers, Captain America. Who you got? Uh, I feel like this one was kind of an automatically, I don't know, some a light bulb went on and I was like, oh, I think this person would be perfect. Also, like, just to kind of note, all of the age range of all of my casting is literally everywhere. So Love those it. don't don't even look at the ages. But I think Glenn Powell would be a good Steve Rogers. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I think that's kind of, you know, it's kind of cheating. Like, you know, he was in Top Gun. He was in Devotion. So being, you know, military slash soldier pilot, yeah. he's done it. Um, so I think, and like looks wise, I think he fits into that. Like what we think comic book Steve Rogers, Captain America would be. Uh, and, I, and I like him. I like watching him on screen. I think he's a lot of fun. I he's think, perfect. Yeah. He's very, very, like, I think that that's the most likely choice if they were actually rebooting today. I think Glenn mm-hmm. Powell would straight up get the role. Yeah. Because uh, he can do it. We also saw him, what was it, Hidden Figures, and he was yeah. playing that, like, very stand-up, uh, went and talked to everybody, shook everybody's hand. I think he was a military man in that, too. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know so what? Military. He'd also be a good Reed Richards, by the way. I know that scene. I know, like, all that you're referencing all the military stuff, which obviously, obviously makes it perfect for Cap. But I think he'd also be a pretty good Reed Richards. I think he could do well with that. Well, listen, Roxy, I applaud you going with somebody a little bit more unknown. I did not do that. Uh, I think that was the right call. But listen, I, you know, Elvis served in World War II, right? What if we gave Cap a little bit of a different flavor? And I had Austin Butler as Steve Rogers' Captain America. He can do the voice. You know, he can still do the Elvis voice. Let's let's see what happens. Let's let's feel it out. That was that was my call. I think it's a, a really good one. I was on the phone with you know when you're so excited about something. I was on the phone, I was with, my on the phone with Austin Butler, and he was like, "No, I was on the phone with my brother till four in the morning about like going back and forth about our cat." I was like, "Who would you cast?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was so excited about it, and he put Austin Butler as Thor, and I was like. That doesn't work as well yeah. as him as Steve. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. I don't see that as much. I, so yeah, I, agreed. I, that one's a little tricky. The, him as Thor is like, Wah. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I'm loving. You're not watching, uh, DJ. You're not watching Masters of the Air. Wendy, are you watching the show? I have not started. It's really good, and it makes me feel very confident that he would be a good choice for this DJ. Yeah. Uh, we just have to know that he has that accent. And that hair, and they seem to be permanent to him, and he cannot change that. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. I mean, we'll see in Dune, because he's got no hair and possibly a different accent in Dune. But no, and, and that's the thing. I'm fine with that. Again, yep. Elvis was around in that time, and it's a yep. little bit of a different. He would be a different. It'd be a little. I feel like a little bit less of an aw shuck Steve. But, you know, we'll feel it out. Uh, Leonard Kim in the chat says, America's ass at the bottom. <laughs> I, feel like, or I feel like we're going really blue this episode, but I'm a little sick and under the weather, so I'm going to allow it. I'm going to I'm going to allow it. All right. So now next up, we're going to do Bruce Banner, the Incredible Hulk himself. Already been recast. This one should be a little bit of a gimme. We're not the first ones to break ground here. We've had a few Bruce Banners in media. How does that make it a gimme? This one was really hard too. I just because just because I feel like from the audience, like people are going to get wait, Glenn Powell is cap. Nobody can be cap other than Chris Evans. And it's like, well, at least with Bruce Banner, we've had a few. Yeah, we've had a few Roxy. I think I'm going to keep this pattern going. I like it. I'm going to start with you. Okay. Um, Again, pulling from my TV world and I think really changing up this character and the metaphor of what it is to like 
hulk out when you have to all the time be um, this like really smart, nerdy, look at thing, the world looks at you in one way kind of person. Um, did you guys watch the TV show The Good Place? Roxy, yes. Roxy, I think our Wonder Twin Powers are about ready to act- activate. Who do, who do you have? You put William Jackson Harper. I put William Jackson Harper. Wait, DJ, that is so weird. Yep. What a random choice. Yep. He is, I mean, him as Cheaty, like, just proves he so, so can be Bruce. Yep. That, that is so weird that you put him. No, nope. yeah, so absolutely. Weird. 100%. Yep. How effing amazing would yeah. he be? He'd be great. Like, He'd be great. Just so, so wonderful. I think we've seen him, like, he's proved that he can be extremely smart, very lovable, a little annoying, um, <laughs> and then can snap. Yeah, and I think he would make a, a a perfect choice here, and it would be different than the Hulks that we've seen so far. And I think that they could really uh, kind of dive into different metaphors and things. Yeah, there we DJ, go. DJ, I can't believe you picked him. We're, on the, so, we're on the same page. What a good choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So How weird. We're Bizarre. vibing out. We got we we know what we want over here. Wendy, did, did you also cast William Jackson Harper? <laughs> you know his name was actually in in my rotation. Uh, and then I was like, oh, I want to really go like weird and outside of the box yeah. for for banners. So I picked Jacob Elordi. Wow. Wow. Like, really Going from Frankenstein's the monster to the Hulk. Like, at the age. I was like, mm. here's what I like about oh, this. Yeah. And I don't and I and I and I and I don't know if this is what you were thinking. I do like I think there's something to be there's something there with saying, like, what if the most beautiful man became yes. a giant yes. monster? <laughs> yep. Yes. And also like. It's the first time I feel like we could see Cap being jealous of Bruce Banner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he walks in, Professor, and all the girls are like, ah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and Cap's kind of like, what? Yeah. <laughs> I actually think that would be really funny. Yeah. In a good I way. Was like, yeah. yeah, why not? Yeah, I like that too. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I th- yeah, I think there's something there. I like it. I like, I like the magic. I like the energy. Uh, Jacob Elordi is on our list. Uh, in the chat, everybody, let us know who you who you cast, uh, and we'll, maybe we'll do a roundup at the end. Um, all right, next up, we got Thor. Oh, this is always exciting to guess where you're going to go, DJ. I have no <laughs> idea your order. Yeah, yeah. Well, again, okay. I wanted because on my on my personal list, it's like the heavy hitters, and then and then, but I was like, no, I need to mix it up. I can't like, yeah, you know. So this was probably my most controversial casting because um, I know a lot of people, like he's a Norse god. Yeah. So that makes it slim pickings look wise, not mm-hmm. slim pit, but like kind of puts you more in a category that I have just decided I don't care about Yeah, because I think you can tweak things and alter things. And um, so I want to pull from the WWE I, love, and, I like where this is going. And um, cast Roman Reigns because he looks like a god. He's cousins with The Rock. So I'm hoping that, um, and and I guess they're not blood related, but they always call each other cousins because they come from the same, um, I don't know whether they call it a tribe or like family. Yeah. But he, so hopefully he gets the acting chops of The Rock. Mm-hmm. And from all of his promos and whatnot, I think he could do a great job. And I honestly think you'd die, like you'd pull a Khaleesi on him. And even though he's um, uh, n- not of Norse skin tones, mm-hmm. I think you bleach the fuck out of his hair. Sorry, playing in the blue too much, DJ. You bleach nah. the crap out yeah. of his hair. Um <laughs> And but you keep the darker eyebrows, and I think you make him look like a Norse god in some ways. And to me, like most importantly, he's huge. Yeah, he's he, he's just yoked. Yeah. And uh, in my Thor, I want somebody who like when they walk in the room, it looks like just oh, like yeah. just you're there. You have such a presence. And we've had good track records with our WWE actors in superhero franchises in general because they're just so superhero like. Yeah, absolutely. Wendy, who you got for Thor Odinson? Uh, I thought of this person, like, like the thought of like, oh, if we ever recast Thor, who could we get? And that popped in my head when I watched Alexander Skarsgård in The Northmen. Yeah. Uh, I was like, you know, look, he's... Wendy, he's you and I are on the same large. page. <laughs> oh, twinsies. Just a massive man. Six yeah. Four. 
like it's just the tower. Yeah, I thought I felt like I felt like four, in some ways, was the trickiest because um, how do I say this nice nicely? I think of the core Avengers in the comics, Thor's the least interesting, uh, mm-hmm. and I think uh, Chris Hemsworth and his collaborators have done the most to define the cultural understanding of uh what you know the pop culture understanding of who the marvel store is mm. um you know i think comic fans could argue i've heard it pointed out and i think there's merit to it that his thor is more in line with hercules from the comics uh the, the marvel version of hercules um and so in some ways it's the trickiest because it's i i when i think i I have the hardest time thinking somebody else other than Chris Hemsworth. But in some ways, to Wendy's point, it's the easiest because it's like, well, the Northman. Just do that. That and it's different. Like you can like if if you have Alexander Skarsgård, like he could do goofy. But I in my mind, I'm kind of thinking similar with Cap. Like I kind of want something a little different. If we're gonna do, if we're gonna cast somebody else, let's do something different. And what if Thor was a little scary? Because he comes from a different <laughs> time, like a more brutal time. And it's kind of like, yeah. I actually kind of don't know what this guy's gonna do. Uh yeah. Because he comes from a place where it's perfect. Like, because he does some really brutal stuff. Like, there's some scenes in Northman that are like really brutal. Oh, and yeah. And if so, you were to be like, yeah, that's, that's what Thor was doing back in that age. You're like, that guy is kind of upsetting. <laughs> I think it's a great pick uh, and definitely has like the size. He's different. We, I think we loved Hemsworth because he really got to make it his own. Um, but like you said, DJ, it's a tricky character, especially at, which is why they struggled for the first through the first two movies. Yep. Yeah. And like, what do we do? I like Leonard Kim's suggestion of Alan Richson. Again, I was trying really hard to lean away from people who have previously been cast as superheroes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I think that Alan Richson would be um, a great guest. And still to this day, I believe is my most viewed interview of that I've ever done. Um, I've been Collider watching. I've been watching. I've been came on. Wow. I mean, it has like millions and millions of views when he came on. That's wow. wild. Wow. Yeah. I've been watching. Um, I've been watching Reacher and he's a lot of fun. And it, it is, ah. it is a, it is a silly, it is a little bit silly show. Cause it's like, you've got this guy, like the fucking biggest beefcake guy in the world, but he's also like smart, like Sherlock Holmes. And it's like, hold slow your roll. Too many, you things. Can't have both, too can you? many things, man. But it was, you know, he's been, he's been doing the thing where he's like, I want to play Batman. And I was like, of course you do. Everybody does. And then you watch it. And I was like, I get Reacher's not really that far removed from Batman. And it's like, what if the toughest guy in the world was also the smartest? And it's like, yeah, maybe we give Batman too many things. Maybe we need to dial it back on Batman a little bit. <laughs> um, uh, so next up on the list is. Where's it going to go? Oh, where's it going to go? Here's the problem with doing the Core Avengers gang. There's only the one lady. Uh, yeah. uh, there's only the one lady and, and I'm going to be, you know, completely honest, not a lot of people of color either. <laughs> um, obviously we've switched it up a little bit, but you know, uh, on paper, not the most diverse superhero team in the world. Totally. Uh, That's why I was like, I don't care that you're a Norse God. Yeah. I don't, I don't yeah. care. Let's check it out. <laughs> well, and again, you get a lot of, and they, and they did this with the movies too, not necessarily with Thor, but with other Asgardians where it's like, you know, they're their own alien race. So like, yeah. yes, Idris Elba's in there. By the way, Idris Elba would probably be a good Thor. But anyway, um, no. now we get to the one lady, Natasha Romanoff, Black Widow. We're mm-hmm. recasting her. So, um, immediately my first thought was Anya Taylor joy because she's got those big eyes. She totally got spy vibes, but I was like, okay, who, who do I feel like? I feel like she's kind of a given. Um, and I was like, I want to, again, challenging myself here. So I just saw for the first time a movie called freaky. Did you guys ever see this movie yes. with, okay. uh, Catherine Newton? Yeah, so I think it should be Catherine Newton. Um, So I think that not this is obviously not the first time I've seen her. We've seen her in a lot of different things. But when I saw her embodying Vince Vaughn's uh, (laughs) serial killer, I was like, oh, this girl can switch. Yeah. She's got that thing. And she has those big eyes. I think that she um, would be killer at action. And I. I believe that she has like a dark past. I'm not talking about the actress, but just she's she can portray it very, very well. So Catherine Newton. What do you got, Wendy? Uh I <laughs> ironically I had Catherine Newton also like in the roundup and Anna Taylor Joy, but then I thought, is it too obvious? 
is it too obvious? And I was like, let me go a different route. So I went with um, Alexandria uh, Daddario. Yeah, she's great. Also going with like the trademark big eyes. Like, I don't know if Roxy or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I was like, I just, I can see her as Natasha. Uh, And I don't think she's been really in like a super action heavy type of film before. I I love her in White Lotus. She's good in White Lotus. Um, She was good uh, in True Detective. Peter yeah. Jackson, no, uh, Percy, not Jackson. Jackson. Percy, Percy Jackson. Percy Jackson, and I was wondering, I haven't seen the first Percy, one. I haven't seen the Percy Jackson movies, but I wonder if maybe she did more actiony stuff in that. Um, no, I think that's a really good choice. I think that was a really good choice. For me, this was a tricky one because, um, again, I'm kind of thinking of like, okay, what can we bring that's different? Um, and I think Black Widow, uh, I think Scarlett Johansson Black Widow was really good, but I, I think her character kind of went the direction that a lot of Marvel's characters went into that sarcastic kind of snarky. And I think with a lot of these, I was like, well, can we bring a little bit of bite back into these characters? And I think with Black Widow, especially she's a spy, you know, I think, I think, um, you know, there's a way to play up the sex appeal in a way that isn't reductive. Um, um, that, it, that is, that is a positive thing for the character and kind of makes her, makes her different. Um, and makes her a little bit more dangerous and also somebody with maybe the physicality to go with the more action stuff. And for some reason I couldn't get past in my mind, um, Ariana DeBose, you know, she's a dancer. Ooh, um, probably cause um, what you wanted her to be in our most recent viewing of her. Yeah. Not wasted in Argyle, not like completely wasted in Argyle. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like I think, like, I think, I think she could do it. I think she'd do a really good job. Um. Yeah. That's uh, so. That was that was the one. And I think you're right, Roxy. Maybe it was one of those like, what if she was used like used well, utilized well yeah. in Argyle? That would have been cool. <laughs> that yeah, would that totally. would have been nice. Yep. Totally. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All righty. Mm-hmm. So now, uh, save him for the end. Poor Mr. Clint Barton, the mm-hmm. one of the most maligned Avengers. But I have a pretty good. I I love Hawkeye, so I think I have a pretty good. I like who I. This is who I always kind of. Even though I like Jeremy Renner, and I think especially once you get to the Hawkeye show, I think they really cracked a. Like this is a good take on the character in this universe. I have who I kind of always thought would be a good Hawkeye. But Roxy, let's start with you. I picked somebody who's actually been in a couple of different big franchises, but. I think he would be awesome. And randomly enough, when I told you guys I made my brother do his list, Mm -hmm. this is kind of a a bit of obscure casting in terms of I don't think it's who people would immediately think of. And both him and I, this was our number one choice without conferring, which I thought was so crazy. Um, And that's Riz Ahmed. I love him. Yeah. I think that he is such a baddie and also would completely make me be interested in a character that, takes a lot to be interested in him for me right now. Um, you believe he could have the skill set for sure. And uh, he's really, really like from the extremes that we've seen, like from Sound of Metal to Nightcrawler to all over the place, like guy can act. Yeah, that's a great choice. And that's a great choice. And also as a Hawkeye fan, I feel like he could really capture an element of the character that I like from the comics that is it, it really doesn't really factor into um the movie hawkeye um kind of that sarcastic cocky like we we especially age of ultron we leaned into more like dad hawkeye which i think especially worked once we introduced <laughs> yeah. um um Haley Seinfeld. Haley seinfeld's character like then it's like yeah. oh this is a good it turns out dad hawkeye is perfect for this um mm-hmm. um yeah i like resume a lot wendy who you got for your for your uh. clint barton I went super obscure in this one because I just want to see how he would do in a superhero role, even though Hawkeye doesn't have like a superhuman strength or whatever. He has a very specific like skill no. instead. Um, but I thought uh, Jeremy Allen White would be a really interesting choice. I love it. I don't know that he'd do it, but I love it. I don't think he'd do it at <laughs> yeah, all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's been pretty vocal about not wanting to do that. Sort of yeah. thing, but I think he'd be really good. I think he'd be a good choice. Yeah, that would be wild. He does brooding very well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who is so okay? Real quick though, uh, even though Jerry Allen White's been like never superhero stuff, who do you think he? We just cast him as Hawkeye, but dream scenario, who do you? What character do we think Jerry Allen White would be like perfect for? I do think he'd be an interesting Bruce Banner as well. To be honest, Ooh, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Because we've seen him hulk out a little bit. Yeah. I'd love to see him do the kind of nerdier side. Were you guys shameless people at all? No. Not really. Okay. No. I like lived for him on that show. I completely felt it's it's wild because he kind of had that Adam Driver thing where like maybe he, the, neither of them were like super duper conventionally attractive at first. Yeah. But their fan base felt like they were the hottest people that ever lived. Yeah. And that's just a pure charisma thing. So it, I don't know. It's hard because it's like you wouldn't think of him as a Batman type, but it's no. like I, I don't really feel like there's a role he couldn't play, honestly, at this point. Uh, here's what I like about the idea of him being Bruce Banner is that interestingly enough, Bruce Banner does seem to attract some of the more brooding, but also some of the more versatile actors of superhero stuff. And I just wonder if maybe that's a little bit of residue from the Bill Bixby show that it's a, it's Hulk's enough of an a pop culture, kind of like Batman, where mm-hmm. it, it feels le- you it, actors still respect it a little bit. I don't know. I, th- I wonder if there's something yeah, there. Hulk's one of the most famous of the of the uh, superheroes. I feel weirdly, yeah, I think you're right, and that's but and I think that's because of the show. But uh, it is kind of like Hulk of them. Well, I mean, sure. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, but everyone knows who he is. I mean, he, Hulk is a household name as opposed to Hawkeye, who's definitely not. Yeah. So, Roxy, I like Rizamet a lot. I like that a lot. Here's here's the one that if I had been casting Avengers back in 2012, whenever that movie came out, and still to this day, I think would do a really good job because, again, I think Hawkeye, you get a little sar- sarcastic. I think Hawkeye, I think Hawkeye could work with a little bit of a Rodney Dangerfield energy where it's like no respect. Like I'm out here with the Avengers, but I get no respect. And so you kind of think of an actor that that has that charisma, but can also do that kind of like uh, kind of fumble their way through things. And I think Ryan Gosling would make a really good Clint Barton. And I think Ooh. it would make people pay attention to that character. Just like they, you know, hey, you need to respect Ken. Even though nobody likes Ken, you need to respect Ken. <laughs> Similar with Clint That's Barton. That's a wild casting choice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he's just crazy enough that he might do it. And that, yeah. I think that's the thing is if you let yeah. him, if you let him have fun, because it's it, Ryan Gosling seems allergic to playing a traditional leading man. Yeah. And I don't think you need to do that with Hawkeye. In fact, I think that's that would be make Hawkeye less appealing. You know, if you mm. so if you let him kind of pull in some Ken energy, where it's like, man, I'm out here. Nobody energy. likes Hawkeye. Yeah, nobody likes Hawkeye. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, Ryan Gosling would do good with that. <laughs> Kennergy. Yes. All right. Here we go. Here's the big ticket, everybody. And, and theoretically, the most challenging one. So you're not doing Nick Fury? I'm saving him for the post credit scene, Roxy. Oh. He, he, and featuring well, It's just and. weird. You just told me you were going to end with... I thought you forgot. I mean, I don't... DJ... <laughs> Dude, you got to trust me. Roxy, you got to trust me. You got to trust okay. me. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's been a wild ride. It's been a mm-hmm. wild ride. I'm sick. All right. I'm things are my <laughs> pistons aren't firing all, on all cylinders. Uh, Mr. R, not RDJ, Mr. Tony Stark, but for most of the entire planet, it, Robert Downey Jr. was so indelible in the role that the character has changed in the comics and animated series to be more like Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so at first, I'm going to tell you guys what I wanted to do, uh-huh. and then I'm going to tell you what I did do. Yeah, you wanted to wreak havoc, but then you I, decided not well, to. Well, kind of. I really thought that Kieran Culkin would crush this. He is such a little shit. Okay, <laughs> I like oh. that. That's, that's really what I wanted to do. But I understand that because of Robert Downey Jr., he, Iron Man has really become, like, leading man. Yeah. Like, and... With that comes like this sex appeal. And I'm not saying Kieran Culkin does not have that because we just watched so many people fall in love with him while he was playing the biggest D-bag of all time. Yeah. (laughs) So I do think that that's an interesting choice. But what I ended up doing is I think he can do that like, ooh, you want to punch him in the face, but you still – he's still just like leading man hot. Um, Tom Palfrey. All right. So you guys know him from – Ozark, I watched him in a movie that I loved called American Murderer. Uh, he has that it factor. He is really, he looks like he could be super wealthy. Uh, he's very talented. And I think he is still small enough where he's not a household name. And it would be really cool to see like this be the role that he gets known for. Dude, I love Tom Pelfrey. Uh, yeah, he was too. one of the few highlights in Iron Fist. Um, uh, and yeah, yeah, true. Good point. Yeah, he was like, like genuinely, like 
this guy's really good. Uh, he also played a really challenging character in Banshee, that uh, a character that you really shouldn't like, um, an ex-Nazi cop that's trying to get away from it. He doesn't want. He's trying to uh, uh, leave his past, and he was so now good. he's in his 40s, so it's like a little old, a little more mature. Yeah, yeah, and it's like, and he was so good, and it's like you couldn't help but like the guy. Yeah, I think that's a really good choice. I like Tom Pelfrey a lot. Wendy. Who you got? This was hard for me. This was actually really hard for me because I went back and forth. Like, who is who can embody what we you know can you know now see as like Tony Stark, the energy and the attitude, right? Yeah. Um. So I kind of went back and forth, and originally I had Chris Pine, Love and then it. I thought I don't think he signed up for another superhero. Probably movie. not, but he'd be good. <laughs> so I I, I struck him since I like used that you know ticket for Jeremy. Allen yeah, yeah. Wait, so I went with Tom Ellis. Nice. Uh, I really oh, like him. Oh, I love there. him. Yeah, and I feel like he's kind of got that swag and that attitude to play, you know, the 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 more flirtatious and like playboy side of Tony Stark, but also he can play off like the genius and, and rich. The, uh, yes, and the rich, rich, a hundred percent. I do yeah. like the idea that you get one ticket, one you, you get to force one actor to be a superhero, but once you, you uh, once you burn that ticket, this. you can't force multiple multiple people. <laughs> Because then you're going to have a problem on set, DJ. Yeah, you know, yeah. You can't have multiple people you forced to be there. <laughs> yeah, could you imagine? Don't come into work, Pouty. Oh, oh, I don't want to be here. I don't want to. Oh, I don't want to. Um, uh, now I feel less bold. I feel less bold. But here, here uh, is my pick. And he's done the superheroes. He's done the Marvel thing before. Uh, Mr. Oscar Isaac, I think, would be a really, really good... Um, Tony Stark, uh, I think there he's he's played shades of that character before in Ex Machina, um, and and again I think his skill set is not best utilized as much as I love him and I love Moon Knight. I don't know that his skill set is best for used for that character. I think it's better used for, like I said earlier, like a Reed Richards, but also like a like a Tony Stark. I think he'd be really good. I believe when we were watching Moon Knight, you said like he should be iron man like yeah. i think that's what you had actually said and i can totally see that he's super suave yeah mm -hmm. yeah like regal suave um and i think he would nail this yeah and, yeah. I, and it's and it's and it's a, as a fan of his for a long time it is a bummer that i just i don't know that the blockbuster movies have figured out how to utilize him well um and uh and so it'd be cool i think this would be be a good use of that so now our little add-on not technically an avenger but you know been a part of the franchise since the dawn of time another character that is is incredibly defined by this performance in the eyes of pop culture nick fury uh, our little post-credit tease here after our main avenger smorgasbord roxy who you got for nick fury it is defined by him, but I went a completely different direction. So did I. Uh, Benicio del Toro. Love it. I oh, love it. I love it. I love oh it. my gosh. I love it. When he speaks, I listen. Yeah. And oh, that's I love it. it. Like he tells me to do something, I'm doing it. He speaks, I listen. You he's you know he's been through some ish. Like, yeah. <laughs> I I don't think I've seen Benicio del Toro in something that I haven't loved his performance in. He's always making interesting decisions. Yes. Uh, and and again, I I like it too because it kind of goes back to some other stuff I've said. It's like it's it's a it's a Nick Fury that I was like, do I trust this guy? Yeah. <laughs> do, do wait? Do I? Like always, like one eyebrow raise at him. Just yeah. Like, I don't know, but don't like know. I'm gonna listen to you. But what? Yeah. I feel like you're gonna kill me. Are you gonna kill me? Are you gonna get me killed? <laughs> Wendy, who you got for Mr. Nicholas J. Fury? Uh, I went with, I just love this actor so much, Maharshal Ali. And I know, I know yeah. he is kind of taken, you know, That's for fine. Great, but like casting. it's we're yeah. recasting. Yeah, it's, it's theories. Uh, but I feel like, like prior to this, like his short lived stint in the, in the Netflix Marvel universe yeah. was so short. And I enjoyed him so much in that role, which is like so completely different than Nick Fury, but I can see him as like a super spy and having to be like five, 10 steps ahead of, you know, the other, the other um, baddies, if you will. And, and just kind of like, you, you, you don't, you just don't know with him. Yeah. I just feel like he can take on the task. 
Uh, here's another thing I love about other than Mahershala Ali, like you could do like a like a uh, Nutty Professor where Mahershala Ali plays all the Avengers. Like he could do, it's just all him. <laughs> but totally. but here's the other thing yeah, I like can. about that. Even though I don't know how his age compares to where um, Sam Jackson was when they started Avengers, mm-hmm. but we never got. And, and here's the thing, like like uh, uh, Sam Jackson is fantastic in the role. The ultimate version of the character was inspired by him to begin with, so there's some synchronicity there. But we never got like like Nick Fury in his prime, running and gunning, like even in Captain Marvel, because it was still it was an even older Sam Jackson with the DH CGI. And I think Mahershala Ali could do that, like running around in the jumpsuit, like old school. What was Nick Fury up to back in the Cold War? Like I could see Marshall like doing that, and as a fan of the character, that excites me. That's really cool. That's not what I went with though, because again, we're doing something different, and I love and I really love the Sam Jackson uh, uh, take on the character. But the uh, or- the original six one six version, we never we never really. I think um, uh, David Hasselhoff did like a TV movie where he played like, for lack of a better word, what word uh, white Nick Fury. Um, but we haven't really gotten like an A list six one six Nick Fury, and I've always thought maybe it's the Snake Plissken uh, effect because he has an eye patch too. But I've always wanted to see Kurt Russell do Nick Fury, Ooh. and so he would be he would be my pick to the point where I was kind of bummed that they didn't say like. Uh, because uh, Nick Fury got to start, actually, I believe he got to start in World War with the Howling Commandos in the World War II comics. So he's a World War II character that got updated into like a Cold War spy character. And I was kind of hoping they would say in Cap One, the first Avenger, that Nick Fury is actually a code name. And so Sam Jackson's current Nick Fury, but in World War II there was another Nick Fury played by Kurt Russell. So you kind of get both, like a best of both worlds. But hey, we're recasting, and Kurt Russell's been great in Monarch Legacy of Monsters. So we got the uh, the perfect. Ultimate Nick Fury. Give me the perfect 616 Nick Fury with Kurt Russell. There's our casting, everybody. Let yeah. us know. Yeah. Let us know in the chat. Uh, for those watching live, you can watch live at patreon.com slash only stupid answers. Um, uh, Mike Joy says Kurt Russell would be good too. You said that before uh, you said it, DJ. I just know. so you know. Just so you know. Uh, yeah. Leonard Kim says, give just give me Denzel's Nick Fury. That'd be great. And he also yeah. he actually can still do the action stuff with the equalizer uh yep. and stuff like that. Um uh Mike Joyce says Sydney Sweeney is Black Widow. Um Leonard Kim, we brought him up earlier. So far I, I'd go Ryan Gosling as Steve Rogers, uh Pedro Pascal as Hulk, and Alan Richson as Thor. A lot of good choices. Uh, before we go, Wendy, where, remind the kids at home, where can they find you? What are you up to? What should they be looking out for from you? Uh, just talking about movies and TV shows on the Movie Couple YouTube channel. So check us out there. Or you can check what I'm up to day to day on my socials, which is really mainly just Instagram nowadays. So it's just my name right here. Wendy Lee Zaney. Check it out. Uh, there'll be links in the description. Roxy, what are you up to that the kids should be checking out? Wendy and I did a, a short together with Cam Rice this year, Ghost at the Table, which Heck is yeah. on his YouTube, which was so fun. Wendy so was awesome. Fun. In it. I got to um, yell at Roxy. And also, Wendy was kind enough to review my movie, Always Lola. So check that out on her channel as well. Yes. Uh, that's not really what you asked me, DJ, but those are a couple of things. And gunplaymovie.com. Oh, please and thank you. Go to gunplaymovie.com. Support our Kickstarter. Support our movie. It's an irreverent existential crime thriller. So if you're a fan of stuff like Good Time, Pulp Fiction, Big Lebowski, stuff like that, I think you'll be really into this movie. It's stylized. It's cool. I think you'll love it. We got a great cast, including Steve Zaragoza, Whitney Moore, and Bree Esrick, and our very own Roxy Stryer. So it doesn't exist without your support. I think we're about halfway through the campaign. So go to gunplaymovie.com. We'd really appreciate it. You can find me at DJ Talks Trash. You can find the show everywhere that matters at Only Stupid Answers, but on Twitter slash X. We ain't got the vowels from stupid. And we will see you all next time. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. <laughs>